When you build a raised bed, should you line it? That's the topic I'd like to discuss in this video. I see a lot of people lining their beds for the wrong reasons or using the wrong material. So the first question is, should you line it? Well, there are some good reasons for lining a raised bed, but a lot of people are lining them for the wrong reason. I'm going to have a look at those in this video. I'm also going to discuss various lining material because it's really important to match the material to the reason why you're lining them. And at the end of the video, I'm also going to have a look at a couple different types of materials for your raised bed to help you select that because the selection of that also affects the type of lining you're going to use. It's still very early in the year here, and this is one of my raised beds. Quite honestly, I don't use a lot of raised beds. I do most of my gardening in the ground because it's easier. I did build this bed specifically for strawberry, and it's out here with all the wild stuff, and it helps me keep the weeds out to some extent. In another month or so, I'll be doing a video on this bed. I'm going to redo the whole thing because I do have some problems in this bed. Even though I have a cover for it, I still have chipmunks coming in here and I have some bowls digging in underneath. I'm going to redo this bed and make a video to show you how to make a raised bed that's rodent proof and keeps the deer out. So what are some good reasons for lining a bed like this? The first one is if you build this in an area that doesn't have soil underneath, so it might be a concrete slab or maybe it's on your driveway that's paved or on your deck, then it's a good idea to line this to keep the soil inside here. You don't want it running out on those hard surfaces. Another reason for lining the bed is if you're building this on soil that's contaminated. Now I see a lot of comments online of people saying, oh, my soil isn't very good, so I want to line it to keep the roots away from my soil. That's not contaminated soil. When I'm talking about contaminated, it means that you know that your soil has some chemicals in it that are toxic to the plants. So most likely those are heavy metals, things like lead. So if you know that your property has lead in it, or you live in an area where the city has told you, look, the soil around here is contaminated with something, and you don't want the roots of your plants growing into that soil, that's a good reason to line it. A third reason for lining are pests, and that's my problem here. I have voles out here, and they tunnel underneath and come up and eat all my strawberries. That's a good reason. So moles, voles, chipmunks, groundhogs, those kind of animals that like to burrow and come into your garden. If you have those, you want to line it. Now, if you have things like rabbits that stay above the ground, lining isn't going to help you with those. You've got to put something over top. And when I redo this bed, I'll show you how to do that. The fourth reason I see a lot for aligning these beds is to keep the vegetables away from this pressure-treated wood. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're using pressure-treated wood that was purchased, say, in the last 10 years, it's been pressure-treated with a copper compound. That copper compound doesn't move into the soil except right along the wood. And even if it's in the soil, the roots don't absorb it. So the current pressure-treated wood we use in Europe and North America is perfectly safe for vegetables. You don't have to line it for that reason. The last reason for lining this is to preserve the wood. And I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. But that's actually not a good reason for lining these. Now let's look at some material you can use for lining these beds. Number one is a hardware clock. So this is some type of screening or wire mesh. And you put that on the bottom underneath this. That prevents things from digging holes and coming up. Now if you're going to do that, make sure your mesh is very small. I have this bed covered with chicken wire and chipmunks are able to get through that. So you want something smaller than chicken wire. Because it's underground, it will rust. So either get a stainless steel material or get one that's fairly thick. If it's thick metal, it will last you a good 10 years. So to stop those rodents from coming in, use that metal mesh. It won't keep roots from growing into the soil below, but it is good for rodents. Another material some people use is landscape fabric. And the idea there is that it holds the soil in, but allows water to drain through. So if your raised bed is on, say, concrete or a driveway, somewhere where you don't have soil underneath, landscape fabric can work quite nicely. 
It also works well in areas where you don't want the roots in this bed going in the soil below. So that's contaminated soil. If you have that, then a root barrier like that will work quite nicely. My bed here is made with two by six. And so the soil in here when it's filled up is about five inches. That's not really enough soil if you have contaminated soil underneath. You wanna go up to at least a foot for that. Probably the most common thing I see people lining with is plastic. And they generally want to put the plastic next to the wood. The reason for that is they think they're keeping the moisture away from the wood so it won't rot so fast. But in fact, it does the exact opposite. You end up trapping moisture between the wood and the plastic and it doesn't evaporate as fast. So in fact, the wood rots faster. Don't put plastic between the wood and the soil. It's a waste of time and money and your wood won't last as long. If you use good quality pressure treated wood, this will last you a good 10 years. And by then there's a very good chance you'll wanna redo it anyways and use a different style or move it a little bit or something like that. Don't use plastic. Don't put plastic underneath either. So some people put plastic down there and poke holes so the water can get out. But that doesn't really work because the roots will then go through those holes. Some people want to line the bottom with things like cardboard and newspaper. That really doesn't make any sense. I think the reason they do that is to stop the weeds from growing through here. But if you build this on a lawn and you put two inches of soil over that lawn, the lawn will die. You don't need cardboard under there. If you do a bed like this, that's six inches high, there are very few weeds that will grow up through this. And the ones that do grow that much aren't going to be stopped by some cardboard. These are things like bindweed, which can grow many feet underground. It just laughs at cardboard. There's absolutely no reason to put cardboard under a raised bed unless you're making a very shallow raised bed. Then it has some value. But once you get to three, four inches of soil, you don't need the cardboard. All right, let's have a look at some material for making these raised beds. The most common one and the one I think most people should use is just pressure treated wood. Now I see a lot of raised beds being made with skinny boards. That's not going to last. That rots very quickly. You want at least a two inch board here. Now in North America, a two inch board means it's only one and a half inches, but you want something like a two by six. That's thick enough that will last you a good 10 years. It's relatively inexpensive. It's easy to work with. Comes in convenient eight, 10 foot lengths. It's a great material and it's perfectly safe for growing vegetables. So the only reason you would line that kind of bed is to keep the rodents out or to keep the soil in here so it's not running onto your concrete floor. As far as height goes, six inches is all you need. Unless you have some disabilities and you can't reach this level, stick to this height. Don't go any higher. The exception is contaminated soil underneath here. And then you want to grow to 12 inches. So two of these boards together. Another really good material is concrete blocks. They are going to last for a very long time. They're much more permanent. And those don't need any lining on the side either. The last choice is stainless steel. And I'm seeing a lot of metal tubs being used now. And they work quite well. My own personal bias is that, first of all, they look really ugly in the garden. Second one is, I don't like the metal. It's way too tall. So people are buying these tubs that are this tall. And then they have problems filling it with soil. Stick with a lower bed and you're much better off. Metal does work. You don't have to line the inside. You may still want to line the bottom of those. To summarize everything, what I'm finding online is that many people are lining their raised beds when they don't need to. Have a specific reason why you need to go to that extra trouble and expense. And if you don't, if you don't have contaminated soil or you're building on normal soil, skip it. That will make the bed easier to build. Anyways, I hope this has been helpful. I'll put a link to some other videos right here. And make sure you subscribe and then in a month or so you'll get another video about rebuilding this bed. I'll show you how to make a rodent proof raised bed. It will be made with pressure treated wood and it will be six inches high. You don't need any more than that. 
and I can grow lots of strawberries in there. See you next time.